Ripple's chief technology officer and XRP visionary David Schwartz just shared one of the most important and shocking pieces of news surrounding the future of Ripple XRP, which has confirmed that they will be entering a $16 trillion market, which could be the catalyst for XRP to finally crack its previous all-time high and make a new one. This is the very same $16 trillion market mentioned here in this video by Adeline Zhu which is the chief ecosystem growth officer over at Chainlink. According to a Boston Consulting Group study, they estimate that the asset tokenization market will reach $16 trillion by 2030. And this is their conservative estimate. And that conservative estimate equals to 10% of global GDP. Furthermore, Major institutions are paying attention to this space. BNY Mellon is the world's largest custodial bank. They're the bank that your banks bank with. And they did a study of uh, institutional asset managers to get their opinions on what they think about this space. And that report found that 97 percent of asset managers believe that tokenization will revolutionize the asset management industry. It's safe to say the future of blockchain is institutional tokenization designed for trickle down economics and services for the average retail investor and consumer, i.e. me and you. But it's also important to remember not all technologies or companies will win in the future unless they have people like David Schwartz. Remember, this man isn't just smart. He's one of the best and brightest in crypto and the blockchain space. An early innovator on the early internet and networks, a former dev at the NSA, and someone Forbes even titled Ripple's Trillion Dollar Man. I mean, even listen to what Ripple XRP's CEO Brad Garlinghouse has to say about him. I'll just add, I think I truly say this. I'm not just saying because he's sitting here, but I think David Schwartz is one of the smartest people I've ever met. And so it's really hard to disagree with someone that you think is that smart. <laughs> if I disagree, it's like, okay, I'm doing something wrong. So in this video, we'll explain how XRP is uniquely positioned to take advantage of this $16 trillion market boom and how some people even think the potential is larger with one article from DailyCoin sharing how XRP is a likely contender to transact in a $50 trillion market, which could send the price to about $100. But is a double digit XRP price even possible? Much less, you know, uh, $100? Well, in this video, I'll share my opinion and I'll give you a fair and balanced information so you know what's likely and what's possible and how to prepare. So if you're feeling blessed, comment 777. If you're feeling bullish, comment 777. And if you're going to be the richest person in your family tree, then smash that subscribe button. Hello and welcome back, bull runners. First and foremost, I just want to extend an apology and kind of explain myself here. In this video that I posted a, a day or two ago on the channel, uh, titled Global Crash Coming, Alarming Data Revealed, uh, 0.07 Cent XRP Incoming. And I can see how if you watched the first minute of it, you might have been a little discouraged or like, is a crash actually coming? We actually got a lot of negative comments on that. People saying, oh, they're flip-flopping, they don't know what they're talking talking about. Uh, and that actually comes right off of the tail of me sharing an analysis on how I think XRP could hit $14.40 in about 300 days. And so, you know, when you get those two videos direct back to back, I can see why uh, it wouldn't really make sense. Ultimately, my goal was to share unbiased information and information that people have been putting out uh, to just share facts and separate it from what's actually possible or potential. If you watch the actual video, uh, you, you would notice that I actually mentioned I'm still bullish right now. Now, is it possible for it to go to there? Well, anything is possible in markets, right? And we'd be liars if that wasn't the case. If we told you this is exactly what's going to happen, we're 100% lying to you because nobody knows what's going to happen. But someone shared a post on how that's going to happen. And I wanted to share that information with you and then share some other information with you. Uh, my goal is ultimately to be unbiased and to just bring you facts and information. So that's the goal of all of the videos that I share, whether there's something that is crazy bullish or crazy 
crazy bearish. Uh, my goal is to tell you exactly where I stand as well, and that is on the bull side as things stand for many different variables and factors. So I apologize for those of you guys who watched that first portion of the video, and uh, let's get into it. So if you've watched any of the previous videos on asset tokenization, we've already talked about how BlackRock is going to be a major player in the game and how they're actually going to integrate that technology into their new stock exchange in Texas, which I believe is going to launch sometime in 2025 or 2026. That said, uh, we do understand that tokenization and the use of blockchain technologies are insane and they provide a lot of opportunities for just about everyone in the world of finance and in the world of business and in the world of ownership. That said, tokenization, for those of you guys who are not you know, familiar, uh, is the process of representing real world assets illiquid assets or data as unique digital tokens on distributed ledger technology, which i.e. is blockchain. And in this article from CoinGecko, they explain that these are tangible assets that exist in the physical world. So essentially, uh, tokenization would be, okay, I own this piece of real estate and here is a digital token that represents that and it's in the blockchain forever, which makes things far more efficient, frictionless. Uh, transactions are far more smooth when it comes to sending back and forth. Let's say someone buys that token off of me. Uh, and uh, examples of these are in real estate, commodities, art, and even even U.S. Treasuries. Real-world assets are a significant composition of the global financial value. The value of global real estate is $326.5 trillion in 2020, and it's higher now, while the gold market capitalization is $12.39 trillion. Again, it's higher right now. So the question becomes, how is Ripple going to be a key player in the globalization of tokenization? Well, let's listen to, uh, you know, CTO Ripple, David Schwartz. Cash. I think the vision now is similar to what drove the adoption of the internet, similar to what uh, drove the adoption of like the international movements of goods, enterprise adoption that paves the way for retail ad adoption is I think what it looks like what's going to happen at least based on you know the, the past two years. So I think the new 10 year vision is enterprise products like stable coins, like real world asset tokenization, like you know commercial lending and real estate lending, but that enable DeFi ecosystems that have things like ways to get yield, ways to manage your money, um, ways to hold the assets that you want to hold. Looks like we had a bit of a lag in the video there, but you caught the gist and you heard what he had to say. The future is going to be asset tokenization. And by now we know that Ripple is a major player in the blockchain game in terms of their technology and their infrastructure and even their growing team. I mean, they're growing and they're spending a lot of money to continue to grow and be the key player to tokenize the world. So as tokenized assets continue to grow, there's going to need to be more infrastructure to handle all of the demand. In this case, we're looking at a company called RW.XYZ, but in particular, Tokenized Asset Coalition. And when you look at all of the major players that are backing them and involved, it's actually quite impressive. Well, recently they put out a report this year on their outlook of the tokenized asset world, or better yet, real world assets. And here's what they found. So here we have the report and the state of the asset tokenization 2024 outlook. Uh, and their executive summary states the tokenized asset coalition or TAC unites traditional and crypto financial systems with the shared belief that all assets, think about that term, all, all assets will eventually move on chain. Now, what kind of assets specifically, when we're talking $16 trillion, and that is a low estimate when 97% of asset managers would like access to this technology to make their lives simpler. We're talking currency. We're talking US treasuries and the bond market, and that is in the range of trillions and trillions of dollars. We're talking private credit markets, as well as commodities, real estate, and even carbon credits where the future is moving towards. But let's dive into some of the most important and key points that they make. In 2024, decentralized protocols, which XRP is one of them, will increasingly collateralize their stable coins in off-chain investment. And guess what's interesting, right? As they're talking about how stable coins are going to be integrated in off-chain investments, what's Ripple working on right now? Stable coins. Why? Because they see the market moving in this direction, and now they have access to actually go ahead and be custodians to stable coins in different markets 
markets all around the world because they bought out a competitor or you know a, a business that would be complementary I should say this could lead to complications settling on chain price stability with less transparent less liquid off chain collateral we observe new service providers and this is another key point uh, emerging to offer consulting to decentralized protocols with respect to financial and legal matters uh, that's where it ripple would enter and say hey we are those guys we know what we're doing we have access to all the right tools resources legal so on and so forth i mean they just basically won a lawsuit with the sec now we're just waiting on a settlement and so dave schwartz and team are moving in the right direction now here's an analysis inside of the report from a guy from coinbase institutional called anthony uh, he says tokens are the next financial share class allowing them to operate on global permissionless public ledgers so when we talk about share class we're talking about people who buy access to shares of companies right and typically you go to a broker uh, and there's a settlement period and there's a lot of rules and regulations well here he's talking about how now it's going to be a global permissionless public ledger again something that xrp has been doing for years something the, the entire blockchain has been doing for years uh, and can solve will be paramount to their success benefits of utilizing a tokenized share class are as nuanced as they are many but we expect the validation to become louder as more market participants integrate the tech stack or blockchain and begin using tokenized assets in their daily workflows now it's important to note that a lot of the times in crypto or actually not even in crypto but in markets and in business in general companies don't go and build everything out themselves more often than not they will buy out companies who already have access or partner with companies who already have the expertise and access to these types of technologies because it's a lot less expensive uh, in the short term it's more expensive but in the long term it's less expensive and typically right they don't have to go and poach all of this talent instead you kind of just bring them into the fold so it makes a lot more sense to integrate great companies and technologies than it does to go and just build it out from scratch especially when we're talking you know xrp and ripple have like a decade on most companies in the blockchain space that is for institutions tying up capital for even more than a few days in higher interest rate environments is much more costly than doing so in lower rate environments we expect tokenization will dramatically change the spectrum of liquidity composability and the cost of managing risk across traditional assets. Now, what is composability in particular? This is a term that we hear a lot and it's it's used often in the crypto space and we're not gonna get too far into the tech stack and what it means. But basically, uh, this article from Wikipedia is stating a highly composable system provides components that can be selected and assembled in various combinations to satisfy specific user requirements. In other words, it's more specific to use cases inside of crypto and in that case, it would make it more efficient. But not only does it make it more efficient, it is widely believed that composability Composable systems are more trustworthy than non-composable systems. And that's another key component of blockchain, right? It's more trustworthy. We're trusting the code and what it's designed to do, not necessarily people. And that in and of itself is efficiency. One of the current use cases that's being grown as we speak is tokenized U.S. Treasuries, available now and scaling on chain. The baseline has been set. This has enabled the crypto native set to become more comfortable with tokenized assets as a class, so we're talking people like us, and has helped the vision of tokenized assets to be more broadly understood and relatable. In other words, your asset managers that looked at crypto as a total scam, now they're looking at it like, wait a minute, so this is far easier to use, it's far more trustworthy, uh, it's scalable, it's global, uh, it's frictionless. All of these things that make blockchain so beautiful and brilliant uh, are starting to look at it and say, wow, I understand it. I will use it instead of you know my old ancient ways of doing things uh, that are not efficient. Technology and the decentralized services available via the nascent and rapidly growing on-chain financial system. Asset managers will further explore tokenized private credit as a means of accessing alternative sources of liquidity. Digital bonds will be increasingly used by financial institutions and governments governments alike to explore new issue and issuance mechanisms and there's another major point who has more partnerships and more um, of an ability to service these large corporate type companies and governments alike i would argue ripple and xrp they are very well positioned to handle this type of stuff considering their blockchain is extremely cheap it's very fast they have the experience they've already built the infrastructure and the technology and now it just comes down to the fact that they are there waiting and the market needs to come to them
But I think the most exciting thing I read in this entire article is this one thing right here. Tokenization is ready to move past proof of concepts and into commercialization. I mean, in other words, we're actually there. What's at stake is billions of dollars just in fees alone that are saved, fees that are earned, more transparency into the financial system, democratization of investment options to many who have never had access, and possibly most importantly, accountability for the institutions and regulators that oversee them. So now guess what? Now that the institutions and regulators work for the people because there's accountability. They can no longer cheat us or lie or create systems that are very difficult if they're using blockchain. And ultimately, if everyone starts using a technology, right, it's kind of like this. You have to hop on board or get left behind because that's the way the world always works. The best technology always wins. In other words, we're still very early when it comes to a company like Ripple. They were just well ahead of the curve. And then it so happened that they got sued by the SEC retroactively for actions that they didn't know were illegal. Uh, and the SEC said they were. And then what happened was they went and won in court anyways. So that said, on June 13th in 2024, Ripple, the leader in enterprise blockchain and crypto solutions, and RCAX, the UK's first financial conduct authority regulated digital asset exchange broker and custodian massive arcax works with leading financial institutions to enable them to tokenize their financial real world assets as you would expect we're talking about this well guess what they're already on it and here's what the the svp at ripple x marcus infungers had say had to say ripple is excited to see arcax vision of driving the adoption of blockchain and digital assets technology amongst financial institutions to come to life while further underlining the credentials of the XRPL as one of the leading blockchains for real world asset tokenization. As the first and only FCA regulated digital securities exchange custodian and brokerage, Arcax is uniquely positioned to provide its clients with the means to derive the benefits of DeFi through real world asset tokenization, all underpinned by the strength and capabilities of XRPL. In other words, we're going to get this no matter what. The question is who's going to win in this race and i would argue with a, a blockchain like the xrpl right companies are going to flock to the best technology that is also the most affordable and has consistently proven themselves to have the best uptime the best team the best technology across the board it just sounds like xrp is designed to win here Still, this had some folks speculating is a $100 XRP on the cards for 2025. And here's an article from Daily Coin. Here's what's in the works. In the article, they stated XRP, the cryptocurrency linked to Ripple Labs, is undergoing a dramatic transformation. Uh, once embroiled in a high stakes legal battle with the SEC, XRP is now being heralded by some as a potential triple digit asset. This dramatic shift in perception is fueled by a confluence of factors, including bold predictions and and potential institutional interest. And here is where Arcax is mentioned. UK-based Bitcoin exchange Arcax plans to tokenize a staggering $50 trillion in assets on the XRP ledger, which could potentially be a game changer and drive mass adoption of XRP from a use case perspective. That doesn't include people who see this type of news and then go and purchase the token too, which would cause and drive the price up, right? And significantly boost its value. Still to be clear cut here and dry, right? That would mean that uh, reaching a five to $10 trillion market capitalization for XRP would be necessary and is arguably unprecedented. So it's not that it couldn't potentially happen. It's that it is a very bold claim uh, in order for it to reach triple digits of like $100. But then I saw a post on X from a gentleman who actually went and did a little bit of math using GPT and here's what he found. So here's the post, uh, and it is in a series of four images, so we'll just pop through those images. Uh, he's basically talking about all the different scenarios with uh, ChatGPT on $50 trillion in tokenized asset. Here's scenario two, if you would like to pause it. Here is the estimated approach and some hypotheticals. Uh, and then finally, we get the conclusion. 
And here's what JPT thinks. Considering the need for high liquidity if XRP is used as a bridge asset for trading $50 trillion in tokenized assets, the price of XRP could theoretically rise significantly. Based on the above estimation, the price of XRP could be about $25. Assuming a demand multiplier driven by liquidity needs, this is a hypothetical and simplified calculation, which I love how honest and fair it is, right? The actual price would depend on numerous factors, including market conditions, adoption rate, regulatory environment, and overall demand supply economics and dynamics. That said, I would argue the regulatory environment is going to continue to improve, right? Kamala Harris even made a call to Mark Cuban recently saying, hey, I want to know more about crypto, probably because it's going to be uh, on the campaign trail at some point in time where she's like, hey, I'm also pro crypto because she's trying to win votes. Uh, but at the end of the day, right, Trump uh, being the favored candidate to win is also on board with it. And even Robert F. Kennedy, right, recently said that he would make an executive order if he became president to to buy like 4 million Bitcoin and keep that in the US Treasury. Now, that said, it's unlikely he's going to win, which means if Donald Trump wins, uh, then it's likely that he would assign Robert F. Kennedy a seat somewhere in the cabinet. And if he was right, he would still have a major impact on how we operate in the world of crypto. So I think a regulatory environment uh, is going to continue to improve. So it really comes down to the adoption rate, partnerships, and then ultimately people seeing that XRP is really just uh, an asset that is designed for institutional players, for tokenization, uh, that the technology is there there it's ready to go uh and it's arguably the best in the space so that said let's get into the price xrp has been trading really strong recently and as you can see from its major low at 38 cents which we did call on the channel uh we are currently up about 57 percent now a lot of folks are getting a little bit worried over the last couple of days considering you know there's been some bearish news and there's always going to be bears out there and i understand why right otherwise markets wouldn't operate uh we have uh, failed to break above the 62 cent level but really i think what's more important is the fact that we have broke above the 54 cent level and when we did as you can see this was a resistance right it then became a support now we have a confluence and what's so beautiful is is when we broke down you can see the support right here on friday july 19th where we were actually bought back up uh, but we also have a confluence of EMAs. So right here on the daily time frame, as you can see, we bounced off that 10 EMA and we are remaining above the 10 EMA. As long as we remain above this orange and blue line and they remained crossed over, the blue line is above the orange line, right? The 10 and 20 EMA, then it's highly likely we're gonna continue in this uptrend considering we are now above a previous resistance right around here to 54 to 52 cents. And we are gunning for that 75 cent mark when i zoom out to let's say uh, a weekly time frame again looks very very bullish when i pull up a vrvp we have so much freaking support here at the 38 cent range it's not even funny uh, and we've traded so long and so often down there that at some point in time even if the price were to trade right back down to 54 cents it's more likely that we get bought back up if the market remains relatively bullish which right now we are right uh, recently we we saw Bitcoin get bought right back up. We saw the Mt. Gox news happen. We saw, uh, you know, people worried about the S&P 500 and how it was recently dumping. We saw Germany sell all of its Bitcoin. And for whatever reason, Bitcoin has failed to break down below that sixty-three dollars to $64,000 range. And each time it gets sold off, it gets bought right back up. So this is very indicative of institutional support and players looking at that $64,000 price and saying, that's a good price to buy. So even if XRP dumped to like 56 to 54 cents, I think that would be a stupid good opportunity to buy into that next major range, which would be 75 cents. Now, the more times you touch a range, right? which used to be a resistance it's going to eventually become a support so it'll break out above then probably be supported and continue moving up but xrp isn't one of those players that just sits in the same range for a while when it breaks out it likes to break out hard okay so i'm going to move out now to a two week time frame we're just going to look at this and as you can see here this wick is so freaking large to the downside and now we have a bullish engulfing candle right things are starting to flip pretty bullish when i go out to a monthly time frame even more bullish we are finally in a range now where realistically from a monthly time frame if we break above this current range at 63 cents and i'll just pull everything off here and keep it very straightforward and simple okay 
And as you can see here, we've been trading here since March of 2023. But if we break out above that 62 cent range, I don't see a reason, especially on a monthly time frame, uh, where we couldn't easily pump into the 75 cent range and then likely a dollar. Okay, but that's short term. We're talking long term. Well, long term, we have so much support here and things are looking so bullish. I don't see why in uh, a bullish in market environment where Bitcoin is going to new all time highs, where XRP for the first and, and last time uh, will pump into this you know two to three dollar range and then it remains to be seen what will happen there people are predicting ten dollars twenty five dollars I personally predict about fourteen dollars at the end of whatever this bull run is and so I'm very much looking forward to that uh, but what's super cool is when I pull up a, a two-week uh, stochastic RSI okay and this is a specialized stochastic RSI you can see here that whenever we turn over from these major lows and start to come back into this 40 uh, percent range right here or negative 40 range uh, we continue to trend up and make new highs for the year right in similar fashion right back here you can see how when we turned up right around here right we continued breaking into above that negative 40 range stayed in there and then the price pumped really hard for new all-time highs until we had this bearish divergence well in similar fashion right and anything below here would be a really good time to buy right Right around here, we had our major lows. And as you can see here, we are officially flipping and getting back into that negative 40 range. And so if we break above the 62 cent range and this remains somewhere in the negative, you know, 30 to negative even 50, or, you know, the I, I would say the one range right here at the even the break even mark, uh, then it's highly likely that we're going to get some new highs into the end of the year. Again, my personal prediction is new highs. Uh, anything that dumps on whatever bearish news or some weird, you know, uh, type of an event, uh, I would immediately buy up. I'm, I'm literally going all in on not only XRP, but other cryptos as well. Uh, but that's because I'm relatively bullish through the end of the year especially when, you know, at this point in the year and through the summer, we're not seeing the same type of sell pressure we typically see. We've seen a lot of ranging, a lot of sideways action, which typically means accumulation. There's a lot of accumulation happening here. And so I thoroughly expect with this tiny little turn, you can see, right, where we got the blue above the orange now, uh, that things are going to look pretty hot through the upcoming couple of months. So if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave us a like, shoot us a comment for what you think is going to happen happen and when you think XRP is going to break out to new all-time highs and then head on over to the description below or go to bullrunners.com to discover how to earn more crypto in less than 10 minutes with the number one play to earn XRP game. So thanks so much for watching the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.